Say goodbye to standard photos and unlock the full potential of your camera. Let's dive in and explore the art of panoramic photography together. I'll show you why you should take panoramas instead of normal landscape photos. And before you'd say that capturing panels with multiple photos requires more effort in post-production and you need special editing software, let me mention that there are more and more apps which can make it for you faster and easier. Luminar Neo is also has a new extension for stitching panoramas from multiple photos or even a video, which is a really cool feature. Among others, I'll show you how it works. But now, let's start with some shooting tips and see all the advantages of shooting panoramas. When you capture multiple photos and stitch them together to create a panorama, you end up with a much higher resolution image compared to a single wide-angle shot. Here you can see the same composition taken with one click in landscape mode and shot as a panorama with multiple photos shot in a portrait mode. Wide-angle lenses sometimes can introduce distortion, particularly at the edge of the frame. By taking multiple photos and stitch them together, you can minimize this distortion and achieve a more natural-looking panorama. Especially you can minimize barrel distortion and vignetting. Panoramas created from multiple photos can cover a wider field of view compared to a single wide-angle shot. This allows you to capture more of the scene and include elements that might have been cut out in a single photo. Stitching together multiple photos allows you to utilize the best parts of each shot, such as exposure and focus. This results in an overall improved image quality as compared to relying on a single wide-angle shot that may have some areas with exposure or focus issues. Creating a panorama from multiple photos gives you more flexibility in the final composition. You can crop the image in post, giving you a greater control over the final result. Panoramas created from multiple shots can provide a greater sense of depth and dimensionality compared to a single wide-angle image. This can make the scene appear more immersive and engaging. And after all, let me show you the latest extension of Luminar Neo, which allows us to stitch panoramas with a couple of clicks. I just import all the photos and then I select and drop them to the panorama stitching window. Here I can turn on settings like distortion correction, the vignetting or chromatic aberration reduction. It can be useful if you shoot with wide angle lenses or even with fisheye lenses, but purple and green fringe can be very common shooting against the sun or with highly contrasty parts like simply shooting against the sky. And as many of the panels are taken like this, it can be useful if we turn this correction on. And once we set our preferences here, they will always be the same until we change them. So it's enough to set it once before we start using this extension. Then simply click on Start. Luminar will make a couple of adjustments and then it shows you the staged image. Here you can change the projection mode and it's worth looking at all these options because different alignments may be better in different cases. This time I select the one which provides straight lines to the buildings near the edge. Then I continue with cropping. Maybe I refine rotation a little bit, crop that huge foreground and set the size of the image. Finally I click on save for processing. Then my panel will appear in a specific folder among all the panoramas generated in Luminar. Switching to the Edit tab, I can use any of the Luminar tools, just like it was a normal photo. I can add more saturation, or even I could change the sky if needed, but this time I like it the way I shot. Now let me show you another example with some tricks. As I've already mentioned, shooting a panel can be very useful if there are some differences in lights, so you can set the best exposure to each part of the image. In this case, the street with the umbrellas was way darker than the other parts, so I shot it with different settings. But as you can see, Luminar blended these photos very well. This time I also go through the different projection modes and select the best one for me. Click on Continue, crop the image and save the panel. Or I can simply step back, clicking on the back arrow and modify the framing if needed. And now I can edit this image too, playing around with contrast, saturation and whatever. Even more, I remove some subjects from the photo, selecting and erasing people. 
until I get a result like this. If you're interested about how to remove people or objects from photos, check out my previous tutorials in this topic. But besides creating panoramas traditionally from photos, Lumina Neo has a very unique feature also creating them from videos. It doesn't matter if we shoot handheld or with a tripod or a gimbal, we can get great panels. Of course, the less shaking in the video leads to better results. So using motorized panel heads or gimbals are the best, but as I mentioned, it also works even with handheld shots. I just import my video just like it was a photo and drag and drop it into the panorama stitching window and click on start. As a first step, I select the starting and ending point of the panning movement and I click on continue. Luminar generates the panel for me and then everything is the same as in the previous case. I can play around with the projection mode and crop and save the panel for further editing. I think it's a very cool feature. And if you're interested in trying Luminar, check out my promo link in the description. Luminar Neo is available on monthly or annual subscriptions and a lifetime version too with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it out. And if you like this short tutorial about panoramic photography, please thumbs up and for further 360 content and tutorials, subscribe to my channel and see you next time.